Minecraft is a game with a lot of features in it, and you ask tons of great questions about all of them. So in this video, I'll answer 20 of your Minecraft questions. So our first question asks, I was always interested in how to return from the end city to the normal world, because they've been there once before, but they didn't know how to return, so they unfortunately died while they were there. Well, there's a very easy way of returning from the end city back to the overworld. Once you're done raiding your end city, you'll probably come across one of these if you run through the end islands enough. That is this thing right here, and it is an end gateway, but something that's really good. They'll actually have this magenta beam come out of them, basically identical to a beacon beam. So when you're running through the world, you can see that beacon beam going up and run towards that. All you have to do to go through them is make a staircase up and get either an ender pearl from an enderman, or if you had some wood with you, you can make a trap door of any type. If it's a trap door, put it on the side, flip it up, go under it, flip it down, and then you can just crawl right into this gateway. Or if it's an ender pearl, throw it in there, you will teleport back to the main end island, and you can go back to the overworld. The next question asks, how come if you place coral on land it dies, but while it's in Steve's inventory it doesn't die? Are Steve's pockets waterlogged? I would assume the reason why this effect happens is that items when in Steve's inventory are basically frozen in time. So for instance, when we have this lava bucket inside of our inventory, it's of course not burning us to death, even though it is literally right in our pockets. Or with something like bamboo, we don't have this item be growing, even though it is just sitting right there. And of course, any block that you can actually place bamboo on, it'll grow on. So you'd assume under that idea they would probably grow in your pockets as well. And of course this is evidenced by a bunch of other items in the game, but I think overall that'd probably be the answer, because it's frozen in time inside of your inventory. The next question asks, how do you find strongholds easily? Now I'm sure of course you know about Eyes of Ender and them leading you to the nearest stronghold, so there is already a mechanic in the game for this. But this can take a long time, so the first thing I would say is that strongholds basically generate in these sort of circles around the spawn of the world. And because of that, you're never really going to find a stronghold that's closer than a thousand blocks out from spawn. So because of that, what I would suggest doing is getting to about a thousand blocks out in any direction, and only then to start to throw your Eyes of Ender. And so you're not going to waste as many Eyes of Ender having them go in a direction that it's going to be no matter what. And the other thing I would say is when actually throwing the Eyes of Ender to find it, to only throw one eye very, very infrequently. Because once it does show you the direction, I'd probably go that direction for at least two to three hundred blocks. And of course you can always use the seed finder chunk base. And as you can see right now, you can see where all the stronghold locations are on there, and also how they somewhat do form in rings. What's the longest amount of time that you could physically fly with an elytra without landing, assuming durability isn't on, and how far would it take you? Of course, if we count using in fireworks, we could just fill our inventory up with those. That would basically take you longer than you could ever play the game straight for. But if we're going without that, then the technique would be going 45 degrees, 45 degrees, as that conserves the most amount of our momentum, as well as the most of our distance. So let's turn maybe right here, and we're going to go up at about 45 degrees as well. And we stop at just about 212, which is of course a lot lower than we were at before, as we started around 320. And so you probably couldn't actually fly as long as you'd think. For instance, going up here again, we're at 195. And so although this is an efficient way of flying, I would say that ideally if you're going straight, you're not going to be going further than maybe a couple thousand blocks without any fireworks. The next question asks, how do different protection enchantments work on armor? Each type of protection has a different functionality to it. We'll start with base protection. What this does, if it's protection 4, is it gives you 16% damage reduction on each piece of armor that it's on. Adding it up on all your pieces of armor, you could have up to 64% damage reduction through all of those. Fire protection actually makes it so that you do not be on fire for as long, or in Bedrock Edition with full fire protection, I don't actually believe you can catch on fire. Projectile protection gives you extra protection against things like shulker pellets or arrows. And blast protection would give you protection from, of course, creeper blasts or maybe wither skeleton skull heads or TNT. However, there is one big difference, is that these give you 32%. And something that a lot of players will do 
is they will put standard protection on every single piece of their armor except for one, and they'll put a specialized protection on one of the pieces of armor. Because of the way that the numbers add up, each one of these would be 16%, and this is 32%. And so by just having one piece of armor with the fire protection on it, we're not getting very much less of the general protection, but we're getting a massive amount more of the fire protection. The next question asks, do you think the Minecraft developers might add another dimension? Because of course the Deep Dark added this portal looking structure. I think it's definitely not settled whether or not this is a portal. I think at this point it definitely will not be added as a portal anytime soon, although it is hard to say with Mojang's current ideas. However, what I would say is that them adding a new dimension is basically guaranteed. As Jeb, one of the developers of the game quite a while ago, said they would be up for adding a new dimension once all the other dimensions have been updated, and of course as 1.17 and 1.18 as well as 1.19 were basically the overworld dimension update, of course 1.16 was the nether update. It makes sense that pretty soon we'll likely have an end update and after that I would say it is very possible that this will become a portal to a new dimension, or that there'll be a new portal to a new dimension somewhere in the game in the next couple updates. The next question asks, is it more efficient to turn coarse dirt into paths or to get it into regular dirt from tilling it. So I would say that's funny enough because of course the stone shovel or any shovel is made with a singular item. So for instance that would be one stone or one diamond or one iron. And of course the hoe is made with two items. When we right click with the hoe once we're more or less using up two points of durability because we use two items to craft this. The actual same amount of resource is being used if we're not talking about mending. Now in terms of time which one of these is actually more efficient? The problem with the path method is even though it may not cost any more resources, it certainly does cost more time as you have to right click and then break it and then replace it. Whereas if you have the coarse dirt, you can simply right click on it and it'll be turned into dirt instantly. And of course, generally the idea of putting coarse dirt into dirt is if you've crafted it, and so you'd have the coarse dirt as an item anyway, so you could place that down as an item, right click on it with the hoe, and now you have your dirt. The next question asks, what is the best enchantment on a sword? Is it sharpness or is it smite? And should you have knockback on a sword? And finally, should there be thorns on your armor? Well, first of all, in terms of thorns, that 100% has to do with what you're dealing with. I would say if you're not doing anything with zombified villagers, you may as well have thorns on your armor. Although it is good to note that when there is thorns on your armor, when an enemy hits you and they take damage, it will also damage your armor quicker. For instance, our chest plate has already lost 20 durability. And with Smite versus Sharpness, it is also situational. Sharpness adds 0.25 more hearts of damage per hit versus the smite, which adds 1.25s, so that's literally five times more. The difference is, is that sharpness affects everything, whereas the smite only works on undead mobs. And finally with knockback, so I would say if you're crafting your perfect sword, you're almost always going to want knockback on that, because even with things like zombies, if they're further away from you, that's always a good thing. Now the next question asks, can you take a malaise into the nether? And this question makes a little bit more sense than you would think, because if you get some malaise on a lead, and you just go right through the nether portal here, the malaise will not go into the nether. You can see they were trying to make them go in. Another comment was also asking, would there be different colored malaise in the future? For instance, something like a red nether malaise. Well, there is a way to get a lays into the nether, and all you have to do is just make sure that they're not on leads, give them an item to locate for you, then put one of the items on the other end of the portal, they will go through the portal to grab it, and when we go on the other side, you'll see they do not turn into a red nether allay, like for instance could be something they might add in the future is a special version of the allay. But you can see they're able to be here, just be aware that allays aren't very smart and they'll often go right into lava. And so be careful about having blocks that they can pick up that are near lava lakes. As you can see right there, unfortunately, their pathfinding really just is not suited to avoiding lava. The next question asks, do you think there'll ever be a wildlife update or tameable dragons added in the future? Well, I would say that in terms of a wildlife update, we basically just got 1.19, the wild update, which I think Mojang would consider to be a wildlife update. So although I think there will eventually be another update that focuses on adding more wildlife into the overworld, I don't think that will be for quite a while. And in terms of tameable dragons, I'm sure you're referencing to how way back in the day Notch was saying he would add a red dragon that you could tame and fly around. 
And I would say I would assume this idea is not going to come back and will probably never be added to the game, just because it's so overpowered and it would be hard to balance that with other features, such as elytra or horses, making really both of those useless. But I wouldn't be shocked if they did add a tameable dragon that you can never take out of the end dimension, maybe giving it a very specific use. The next question asks if enchanting on the full moon is any better, as they've tried it and they believe that because of their results, the full moon may power up your table, giving you better enchanting. Well, we'll place down our enchanting table and I will do two tests. So I will enchant 10 netherite swords on the full moon, and I will enchant 10 netherite swords in the middle of the day to see which one of these provides better results. So we'll start with the swords that were enchanted during a full moon. You can see the results here. They generally have one to two enchantments on them, with a couple having three. Now we'll compare that to the ones on the middle of the day. And you can see right here, this one has sharpness three. This one has three enchantments. This one has three as well. This one has one. This one has one. This one has two. This one is very good. It has smite five, looting three, and knockback two, which is very rare. So technically, that means we got better enchants during the middle of the day than we did on the full moon. And so I would say the result is the time doesn't affect whatsoever what enchantments you get. And the next question is strategies to not die when mining. So the first thing I would suggest is bringing a potion of night vision. The next thing is some wool blocks can help you if you run into an ancient city. You can use those to make sure that the skulk sensors as well as the warden cannot sense you. Then a water bucket can be great for things like dealing with lava. Let's say you're strip mining and you run into some lava. You can harden that lava with this bucket of water. But it can also be good for not dying from fall damage. You can, for instance, use it to sort of make yourself easily go down a cliff. Boats are also a great way of doing this, as in Java Edition, you do not get any fall damage if you fall off the edge of something in a boat. Shields can save your life as well. Even things like zombie attacks can basically be eternally stopped by a shield. Torches to make sure you're lighting up where you've been so you do not get lost. And overall, I would also suggest making sure to actually bring a weapon with you when you are caving. As for instance, right now I was fully prepared but did not have a weapon and so because of that even something as simple as some zombies can overpower me now we have a question that asks what's the best way to explore newer farther places in your world as they're trying to explore farther out to get more resources from different biomes well of course you can always just travel in a straight line until you find something but if you did want to use a seed finder which is more or less the only incredibly efficient way of finding things that are far out what i would suggest doing is simply typing in the chat slash seed. You can see the seed appears up there on the screen. Then you just double click that. You can also get your seed on Bedrock Edition if you go to your options menu on there. Now once you've copied that, then go to the seedfinderchunkbase.com and put in your seed. And once your seed is inputted, you can see all the different biomes that are around. Definitely your best option overall, and this certainly does work for Bedrock as well. Just go here and click Bedrock. And the next question asks, what do you think the 1.20 update will be? Well, I think it's a 95% chance that it's one of these four things. I think either it will be the combat update that we've had combat snapshots here and there for literally since 1.13, or what it could also be is an update where they add the archaeology system, that was also promised. I think we may also see the birch forest be updated, although probably that won't be till 1.21. And I think the final thing that 1.20 might be is an end dimension update, as it just does seem like the natural progression of them first updating the nether, then the overworld, and ending with the end, to maybe in 1.21 or 1.22, adding a fourth dimension with the ancient city portal lookalike. And the next question asks, is it true a channeling trident when thrown and killing a player deletes that player's items because of the fire? Let's test this out by throwing some items right into the center of it. And you can see that if we throw those items into the lightning, that they disappear instantly. So lightning does destroy items. However, this is not at all the scenario in which you'd be struck by a channeling trident. So we are on one half heart of health, and every single square of our inventory is full of items, except for the spot where our trident is, and we're going to have that trident fall right on top of our heads. And well, believe it or not, I come back here and every single one of my items is completely gone, even though we were not isolated in a specific area, and even though the fire itself was not there, the lightning lasts long enough after it kills us to instantly destroy all of our items. And so that is correct, that a channeling trident destroys all the items from a player that it kills. The next question is, is the discount from taking a zombie villager and healing it, is that permanent? Well it is permanent, but the reason why you may think it's not 
is that initially when you first heal them, their trades will be lowered by a large price, so actually more than the final amount that they'll be lowered by. But eventually, that's just because of initial thankfulness, and it'll go back up to what it normally is, which is minus 5 for any one of the items on this side. And so if the price initially is lower, that's cool, but long term it's not going to stay that way. And so basically, yes, it is permanent, but the very, very initial effect that is an incredibly large discount is not. And the next question asks, which falls faster, sand gravel or my grades when a new Minecraft update drops? Well, we're going to find this out. So here is all the work that you should be doing. Now here is our sand, our gravel, and I just threw in an anvil and a concrete powder for a control test. We're going to let these all fall and we'll see which one falls, and it looks like, yeah, your grades do indeed fall faster. We will check the original replay, but it does seem that, yes, your grades are falling faster when a new update drops, so you should probably work on your studying habits, but either way, that is the answer to your question. Can you combine diamond and netherite tools together in an anvil, this question asks. We can turn that into a netherite pickaxe, so that's diamond and netherite combining. However, let's try this right here. If we put this unbreaking three pickaxe inside of the anvil and we put this fortune 3 pickaxe in it as well you can see they will not combine we can try either way but it just will not combine now of course you can have a diamond with a diamond pickaxe and you can have a netherite with a netherite pickaxe but you just cannot combine those now something i would recommend is to get your perfect pickaxe before you turn it into netherite and put them in the smithing table before you have to worry about having some of your pickaxes be netherite and some be diamond just upgrade it before you even turn it into netherite the next question asks, are clocks useful in hardcore? I would actually say they're more useful in hardcore than they are in normal gameplay of survival. The reason why is that it's incredibly important to go to sleep on time, and let's say you're caving around, you wouldn't necessarily notice if it's daytime or nighttime at all, in fact you wouldn't really know in most scenarios, but if it is nighttime you'll know to either sleep down in the cave, or to go up to your house to sleep, and then of course you can skip the night and not have to worry about dying to hostile mobs. And so I would say yes, definitely a clock is useful in hardcore. And our last question says, do you have a video on how to use command blocks to clear out stone like you do in your mining guide videos? All you have to do is summon in a command block, so slash give your player name command block. You want to go execute, at, and then the at symbol P. Then you want to go run, fill. Now you want to use the tilde key. This key is generally right below your escape key. And you want to go tilde 15, tilde 15, tilde 15, then tilde negative 15, tilde negative 15, tilde negative 15, and go air, replace, and whatever block you want to do. So for instance, I would suggest doing hashtag minecraft colon base underscore stone underscore overworld. You could also set up additional command blocks for things like dirt or water or lava. Now on the command block, turn this into a repeat command block and and put always active or we could even just put a lever on there and of course that's whatever you want we'll put a lever here turn it on and you can see what will happen is that any blocks that are nearby us will be instantly cleared out of everything but the ores as of course that's basically all that's left when we remove all the base overworld stone i hope you enjoyed and i hope i answered some of the questions that you have about minecraft feel free to leave more questions you have in the comments who knows i might use them in a future video goodbye to my viewers and good riddance to all this deep slate